Hi, I'm Andrew, and I'm part of the new support team. And um, we're just going to ask you a few questions about the Tata Tower Challenge. So, first, um, I heard that you've been um, done something similar before. And um, how did you do? Uh, yeah, 12 months ago, I did uh, London to Paris, 300 miles in four days. That's on behalf of a local charity, Warrington. I also did the London 100 August last year, again for a local charity. Okay, um, and it's, um, which one of you do you think is the fittest? <laughs> right at the moment. <laughs> I've done limited training so far. I've done about five or six rides, but I need to start upping the levels, up, upping the miles. I think the highest I've done so far is about 40, 45 miles. So mm -hmm. doing five, going 45 to 500, I think I'm going to have to do a little bit more, a little bit more training. But it's all being planned. It will be done. It will be done. Mm. Hello, I'm George Couch, and what would be your key motivation while you're cycling? <laughs> key motivation? Um, food at the end. <laughs> to get to the end. To get yeah. to the end. 500 miles in five days is a challenge. Uh, yes, I did London Paris, which was 300 miles in four days, but it's 100 miles a day, and it's just basically <coughs> um, ticking along, keeping going. Knowing full well you've got a break every 25 miles you sleep, basically you're just working to the next stage and the next stage, knowing that at the end of it you've got the Eiffel Tower, Paris, everything that goes with it, and in fact the achievement at the end of it. I think we've, we've always got to keep in mind as well that the reason we're doing it is for mental health and, and promoting mental uh, the, the awareness of mental health, so we want to be... Uh, that will be our major motivation. Mm. You know, we really mm, want to get it finished. We really want to advertise mental health and, and make sure that people know about it. Um, and it's not just kicked kicked under the uh, the curb, as you, if you like. Excuse the bicycle pod. <laughs> <laughs> On your journey, what do you think would be your main uh, struggle to overcome? Uh, tiredness. Tiredness. <laughs> tiredness um, Aching legs. Yeah, aching bum. Um, sitting on a, on, a, on a hard saddle for nine, ten hours a day. Um, and the weather. Yeah, hopefully because it's July it'll be a... Yes. It, it might be warm, but as we know with British summertime, it might not be. It could be raining every single day. Um, but our dates are set, so we've just got to go for it. Mm. As you said, you've done a lot of cycling before. Uh, are you confident about about the tower to tower with your cycling experience? Yes, I'll do it. <laughs> I bought a bike two years ago to get fit. Set myself a challenge. Said to my wife, "I'm going to do London Paris," which comes a bit of a shock because if I don't set the challenge, I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. So 500 miles. Yes, we've got to train for it, but the challenge is there. And yes, I will do it. Well, one of the things we're doing it is the um, commitment and the thing is at the end of the day we are doing it for a purpose and a very valuable purpose and a worthy purpose in terms of promoting mental health. So yes, it will be done. Yeah. One way or the Even other. if we have to push, <laughs> push the bikes there, it will be done. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Jack Eden. What, what are you looking forward to seeing most on your trip? Um, Great British countryside, it'd be lovely. <laughs> Cycling through, I'm not looking forward to hills. No. Um, I am looking forward to the Eiffel Tower. Um, and just seeing it, it's a great spectacle anyway, but just to see it after you've had 500 plus miles in the saddle, I think it would just be amazing. Can't wait to, to lay down next to it. Having, um, yeah, having done London Paris last year, I can say that that last few miles kilometres into Paris when you can see the Eiffel Tower in front of you where we did we went round the Arc de Triomphe, round the side of the Champs Elysees, round the Concorde de Palais, finish up in front of the Eiffel Tower. Um, to say that every single one of us actually broke down in tears at the end. It really is emotional. Uh, have you bought your bike bikes for the trip? I've had mine for about four years now so but it's it's an in, yeah, I call it an indoor bike because I, I keep it in the hallway rather than, <laughs> rather than outside in, in the weather. So it's well looked after. It just needs more riding by me. So um, yeah, bike is bought, bike is ready. It might need a little service before um, before we start, but um, hopefully it'll, it'll, be, it'll get me there. 
Mm. Well, I've actually bought a new bike. Nice. Decided to, the, one, the one I had was fine, but um, <clears throat> knowing what I've got in front of me, I decided to uh, went out and bought a new bike. Uh, are you looking forward to doing it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can probably wait because I need to do the training. Absolutely. But yeah, eventually. Um, I think when we get to it and we're ready and we've and every all the build up has been for something, and I think we're really, really looking forward to getting going. I think the first day will be a gentleman alone. I think the first day will be hard, yeah. but then once you get into it, mm. yeah, looking forward to it. Mm. Uh, what's the longest you've ever cycled in one day? Hundred miles. My 70 miles. So I've got a little bit of catch up to do. I only said that a bit more than that. Yeah. Um, we got lost doing the London. Going down for, to Lewin, London, Paris, the first day should have been 95 miles to London to Dover if we got lost and finished doing 115. <laughs> Hopefully that won't happen with us. Hopefully we won't get lost and we'll know exactly where we go. Uh, why did you get involved? Uh, one reason really, we lost uh, a fantastic member of our team to mental health issues so um, we just we wanted to do something to raise the awareness of mental health in the city, in the, in, in the country. So by doing this we get loads of publicity, we advertise mm. uh, mental health and, and hopefully people will become aware of it. Mm. I that. Well I, it's because my wife worked for the school, I know Alan Preston. Uh, I know some of the other guys, and I was asked to do it because I'm a second experience, so and I'm delighted to do it. Hi, I'm Jacob. Um, what will you do once you finish the, or in, fa in Paris? What will you do when you finish? Sleep. Uh, call off. <laughs> probably call at the nearest bar, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hopefully get to a shop where we can get some form of. Uh, Liquid lunch. Liquid, liquid lunch, yeah. yes. Actually, um, interesting question because we arrive in Paris a few hours before the Tour de France finishes on the Champs Elysees. And if we have time, we're going to probably make our way up and watch the, um, the end of the Tour de France. If we can get close. Maybe they'll mistake us for the actual Tour de France people and we'll just, <laughs> we'll just, we'll just go for it. Yeah, really nice thought. Yeah. And, um, what with, well, how will you get back from Paris? That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. That's yet to be decided, but it's looking oh. likely to be a minibus slash coach. You could also cycle back. Oh, I was just thinking, you might have another moment. You could cycle back, yes. Yeah. But it's not been um, it's not been confirmed yet yeah. as to how we're getting back. Probably on the minibuses on the yeah. support of course. What do you do about your bike breaking the way? Well, well we, we have no option other than to it. stop and fix it. Yeah, we've just got to get off, fix it, sort it out. We have like puncture repair kits and we have mm. spare, spare inner tubes on our bikes. So if it's, a, if it's a puncture, it's a quick fix on the roadside. If it's something a bit more serious, then it'll take us a little bit longer we, to. We will actually have a support okay, vehicle yeah. with us, we yeah. believe, um, with some uh, mechanical bits. But if it's, <coughs> if it's a blowout, could fix it ourselves. Yeah. If it's a spoke that's broken, a bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. If we have a crash and ride the bike off, then it's walk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or go on the back of someone else's as well. Back, yeah. Why do you have chosen a TTT challenge? Why have we chose it? Yeah. Um, just, for, just for the reasons we've said, you know, it's, it's, we want to highlight mental health, but we also, I think, a little bit inside of us, we just we want to challenge and we want to see if we can actually do what we're what we're trying to do. See if we can actually do 500 miles in five days. Mm. Um, it's, it's kind of inbred into into us a little bit, where we just want to challenge ourselves and see if we can do it. I mean, the Tower to Tower Park comes because we're going to be starting at the um, St John's Tower, Liverpool Radio City, middle of Liverpool. And cycle all the way to the Eiffel Tower. Mm. Hence the Tower to Tower. Um, why are you choosing to do this um, type of. Um, why cycling? Bicycle? Yeah. Not like. Yeah, I think because we were already cyclists and we already go out on a Sunday and we, we've got like a little cycling team that's from Coldstones in the community, I think we just. 
cycling comes a bit more natural to us than say running a long distance. So it's a long way to run. <laughs> it's not quite a very long way to run. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can do a bungee jump or you can do a skydive and that, but it's over quite quickly. We wanted, we wanted a big challenge, a, a, something that's going to be prolonged, something that people can get behind, sponsors, and raise as much money as possible. Um, what are your sleeping arrangements when you're on there? Uh, that is also yet to be decided, but it's basically going to be um, hotels or hostels, somewhere with a nice warm bed is all we need really, just to mm. recuperate, rest, recuperate and get ready for the next day I think. Um, how, how long will you be training for to do it? As often as we possibly can. Um, we all work, so we basically grab time as and when we can. Uh, probably get out once, maybe twice in the evenings, certainly at weekends. There are a series of what we call cycle sportives that have been uh, that we are entering at individual times. A sportive is it's um, an event which is an organised event, but you know that you've got the miles to do, and it helps get you through it. But there is challenge. There are various challenges that we've got ahead of us to. Um, get the training done and the motivation. Some of us may have exercise bikes, I have an exercise bike at home. I'll be going on that as often as I can. Some of them have what are called turbo trainers, where you can take the bike off the road, put it on the, these what are called wheels, and pedal furiously on those at home as well, as well as going out. Mm. And a bit of gym work, a bit of swimming. Um, <coughs> do you have to have any sort of like eating? Do you have to eat any differently when you're on it? need to eat a lot. <laughs> Replace the because we could be burning what five, five, seven, six, seven thousand calories a day. Six thousand calories. Yes. Um, so we need to be eating about about that amount plus the normal amount we're supposed to have during the day. So we're talking eight, nine, ten thousand calories per night that we need to, or during the day that we need to be able to put back into our body. So yeah, mm. I think food's going to be a big. So when you're on the uh, doing hundred miles, it's going to take. Somewhere between, depending on your fitness, six between five and a half, six, seven, eight hours. You can't just stop off at a pub and have a steak, and, steak pie, chips and peas. <laughs> um, we have what we call energy bars, energy gels, um, electrolytic drinks that you take. You've got to, you've got to keep yourself hydrated all the time. Energy bars, you, can, you eat those because they're a lot of carbohydrates. Uh, sugars, I know everyone talks about sugar, but they, you, you sometimes need a, a sugar boost to keep you going. And that, that, that's what you keep going through in the day. The evening, you may have things like chicken, pasta, some with protein, carbohydrates. Um, you don't want anything like chips and pie. No. It's, it's no, none of the food. greasy foods, yeah. It's, it's all high protein, yeah. um, some carbohydrates and energy gels, yes. Hello, I'm Cameron. Thank you, I've got a question. Um, what metal will your bikes be made out of? Sorry? What metal. metal. What metal uh, will your bikes be made out of? Some are made out of carbon. Uh, that's some of the high end bikes. The, the, uh, the, the people with the, the carbon bikes are going to be probably the quickest because they're the lightest bikes. Uh, and on fitness obviously. Um, <laughs> the rest of them are made out of aluminium, uh, which is a lighter metal than say like steel. The old, in the olden days bikes were made out of steel mm. and they were incredibly heavy. Um, you might have a bike yourself, uh, you've had a couple of years and it's, it's really heavy and it's made out of steel. But the new bikes nowadays are aluminium or carbon and they're really, really light. So you can, you can easily pick them up. So if we do need to run up any hills, we can just quickly hitch them up. Yeah, mine's, um, mine's an aluminium with carbon Yeah, to mix. It's very light, you can literally pick it up with your couple of fingers you can just pick the whole bike straight up, straight up in the air. Um, and what will you drink? Lots of high energy drinks with uh, electrolytes in them that can just fuel us all day. And water is, is, is as good to substitute as anything really. So plenty of water, plenty of electrolytes, plenty of energy gels, things like that that just give us boosts of energy constantly throughout the ride. Electrolytes are to replace the lost salt. Yeah. If you're perspiring, you've got you, you need, you know, it. Also helps with the muscles as well, mm. recovery. And um, during the day, you'll be taking what they call energy gels, which will be impregnated with <laughs> pure caffeine. Mm. You get a lot of coffee. Believe it or not, coffee yeah. is it's, um, it's, it's it's an allowable stimulant. How much do you 
which people will be going to review on this map one? 16, 16 people here, yeah. 16 all together. Um, so quite a big, they call it a peloton when loads of bikes go all at the same time, so quite a big peloton of us, uh, which will probably spread out as the days go on and people get tired, and, um, mm. me for example get tired. Um, I don't mind uh, supporting the back if I need to. Um, oh, I'll actually get the hills. Yeah, 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 I think the hills are going to be the biggest challenge. <clears throat> um, do you think people will do, um, do stuff, um, do marathons like you will, um, copy you? Do you like a, a, like a big ride? Yeah, there's, there's, if you go on Twitter and you type in things like, uh, there's actually another tower to tower that goes from the Blackpool Tower to the Eiffel Tower. Um, so there's, there's people, people all, all over the country do similar things, but it is quite a large challenge, so you don't get that many of this magnitude. Um, but there's, yeah, there's, there's lots of fundraising events, isn't there? That, yeah. so there are, so it's, yeah, there's several. There's, um, there's London, Newcastle, which is 24 hours. Uh, there is London, Paris, which is in 24 hours. Um, so I've done the London 100, I've done Man Liverpool, uh, Manchester, Liverpool, Manchester, Chester. There are various different mm. events. Uh, there's the three cities which takes in London, Amsterdam, Brussels, which is 300 miles, but yes, there are a few. And they're all in aid of different various charities from around the UK. In fact, I know that on the day we arrive in Paris, there will be action, medic, action for medical or medical action research. We'll be arriving in Paris at the same time we will. Thank you, Clinton. Um, how fast will you be going? Depends <laughs> how hilly it is. <laughs> yeah, it's slow probably. If it's well, we, we have to pace ourselves um, anyway. If we go too quickly, then we're going to get tired out before we on the first day, and then that's going to make all the other days hard. So the biggest one of the biggest challenges is going to be making sure we go at a comfortable pace that we can sustain for five days. Um, Depends on the uh, on the road surface. Yeah. If it's on the hills, depending on the hill, we could be doing about <laughs> five mile an hour. Yeah, up to ten on the flat. Anything between 25 up to 30 miles an hour. Average, probably about 15, 16 miles an hour. Yeah. Average. Okay. Will any of us be getting an ice bath or anything? Probably every night. Uh, even if it's just in a hotel and we just put cold water in the bath. But didn't really see Davina McCall yeah. when she did hers and she just had, in whatever hotel she was in, she had a bath, filled it with cold water and just got in it. Six or seven minutes. It'd be horrendous. Really, really cold, but it helps your muscles to regenerate overnight, so it's something I think we're going to have to do. And it'll be quite funny to watch other people do it, it's just when it's your turn, that's <laughs> quite, quite, nice, quite bad. By that time, the water warmed up. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. um, will you be going on any main roads? All the way, yeah, pretty yes. much. There'll be lots of. Um, we, 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 all of our bikes are road bikes, so we will be on the road constantly. Um, but obviously country lane, we'll try to avoid the main roads. Um, we'll be going down country lanes and A roads. Um, after, after, um, uh, what injuries would uh, you expect to obtain Injuries, it'd be more repetitive strain injuries, so knees will be quite sore, um, lower back, lower back. Uh, shoulders hurt, which is strange because of the your position in the saddle. Um, I get I get sore, I went on a ride last night and my top of my shoulders are sore, so I think sometimes we have to adjust our bikes so that it takes a bit of a sta strain off different areas of our body, I think. Yeah. <coughs> um, how, how important would healthy eating be on, on like a trip like this? Very huge, yeah. Yeah, if your body's not healthy, then you're not going to be able to sustain a trip like this. Are you? You've got to really um, take it. And when we say training, we talk about all of the, the cycling we're doing to, to train our legs, but we've, we've also got to remember that we've got to train, you know, help our bodies by um, putting in healthy food so that our bodies get all the opportunity to build the muscle um, and, and get as fit as we possibly can before we go in. Yeah. So about the main roads, um, nobody's actually asked us the route that we're taking, mm -hmm. is the question you've got, is it? Yeah, that's, um, so hi, I'm Kai, and um, yeah, my question, one of my questions are like, what is your route? Um, Wednesday the 23rd of July we will be departing from the St John's Tower, let's hope that Radio City will be there to um, see us off, hmm. or somebody, um, although we, are, we believe that Liverpool Bay TV may be televising the event as well, we leave there about 10 o'clock in the morning, the reason being is to allow rush hour traffic, 
We'll be setting off south, hit the A49 and all the way down to Lem Lem is it Lemster, which is in Herefordshire. It's about 107 miles the first day. Uh, second day overnight down in Lemster, second day from Lemster across to Abingdon in Oxford, which is about 87, 90 miles. And on the Friday we set off down to New Haven, stay overnight in New Haven, which is down on the, the south coast near, near Sussex, um, and then from New Haven get the ferry across to Dieppe. And then a nice, easy two days from Dieppe into Paris because I think we've only got 80 miles in the two yeah. days under my split. Stay in Evro, is it Evro? Yeah. Uh, on the Saturday night and arrive in Paris under the Eiffel Tower on a beautiful, glorious, sunny day. On the Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> um, seeing as it is 500 miles, um, what impact do you think this challenge will have? Um, I think it's the reward and satisfaction of completing it and the fact that you've raised the, the, the funds for a very, very worthy charity. Um, do you feel strongly enough about fundraising for the Mental Health Challenge um, that you would do this again in the future? I think we need to get past the first one, <laughs> see what that's like. And then, uh, but then, but certainly, I, ca I can see if it goes well and we really enjoy it, then I can see this being something we would do in the future, mm. certainly. Yeah. yeah. Um, are you nervous about cycling to Paris? If we prepare well and we, we train well, we should be, I think, we'd be more looking forward to it than nervous. Um, but it's a massive challenge. Uh, there's, there's no mistake, no mistake in that. It's, yeah, I mean, having done London Paris, 300 miles. Um, yeah, this is a bit further. I think I probably, I don't know if I'm the only one of the team who actually have a very good idea what's ahead of us. Yeah. Having I'm done it, I know, what, I know what's in front. Yeah, I think I'm happy that I don't know <laughs> And although um, I know what the South Downs are going to be like, mm. it's not exactly flat. Um, and last off, who is going with you? Uh, there's, who have we got? We've got staff. Ex staff, um, governors, governors friends. friends of staff, and friends of ex staff. Uh, this is uh, 16 of us. It's a massive Calderstones community mm. all taking part. Thank you. Thank you. Our theme today is uh, healthy eating. What message would you give to our pupils who currently don't exercise or eat healthily? What I always say to my pupils, being a PT chair, is you only get one body. You can't, you can't swap that body for a new one when you finish with it. You, ha you only get one, so it's up to you to look after that, what that body. You have to make sure that you keep it healthy. You have to make sure that you do regular exercise in order to keep it healthy and eat well. If you don't, it's, it's an uphill battle. And if you get, it's fine when you're a child and you think, oh, it's okay, I can eat this, I can eat that. And it, 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 in, in some cases it is, but as soon as you get older and you keep those habits, that's where you've got to, you, you've got to do that extra work. Um, to, to look after your body because when you leave school and you're not doing PE anymore it's up to you then to take on the mantle of getting your own physical activity in and, and I think it's really really important well yeah it's like anything um, building the foundation building blocks if you look after your body from a young age eat healthily physical exercise your heart is a, oh, it's a muscle it's also your engine if you can build that heart up I'm 60 years of age and I'm doing a 500 man bike. That's very impressive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just know that, that that's that's the biggest sad ever. But I I've, I've kept myself fit all my life. I've been an athlete. Okay. Yeah, I did. Remember, yes, an athlete when I was 20. I represented represented my own country. I've kept myself fit and healthy as best possible all my life. I don't think there are many who would just take on this 500 mile challenge. No, I don't. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you for coming in. You're welcome. Thank you. We're very pleased to have you. And good luck. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys. Thanks. 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 Thanks.